Nigeria's labor unions have begun an indefinite strike to protest the beating of Nigerian Labor Congress President Joe Ajero, allegedly by security agents earlier this month. The labor leader was attending an official function when he was picked up by authorities. Timothy Obiezu reports from Abuja. For a second day in Wednesday, the nationwide strike called by the Nigerian Labor Congress, NLC, and the Trade Union Congress, TUC, held firm. Compliance is stricter in the capital, Abuja, the operational nerve center of the workers' unions. The strike is in response to the beating of the NLC president, Joe Ajero, on November the 1st in southeastern Imo State, where he was to lead workers in protest over unpaid salaries. The NLC said Ajero was picked up in the regional office the morning of the protest day by armed policemen and beaten mercilessly. Police have denied beating the NLC president. Police said agents only took Ajero into protective custody to save him from an angry mob. Benson Upa is the spokesperson of the Nigerian Labor Congress. He says the NLC president is still recovering from the incident. He was in a bad shape. He had lost. Um, he had lost his bearing. His uh, his um, his. I mean, his right eye was short and puffed, and all of that. Now recognition was poor. Up to this moment, there has been no condemnation for what happened. No one has been arrested, let alone prosecuted for this heinous crime. It is about the right of every citizen. Two, freedom and the right of every citizen to justice. The issues that that led, uh, I mean, the movement of uh, uh, of uh, um, NLC that keeps people to evil, and those issues have not been addressed. But Ajero's beating is not the only reason for the strike. The unions also blame authorities for failing to honor agreements made to cushion the cost of living crisis triggered by government's economic reforms introduced in May. Earlier this year, President Bola Tinubu scrapped expensive fuel subsidies and floated the Nigerian currency in a bid to unify a multiple exchange rate system. But the decision has hurt the economy and millions of citizens. In August, workers staged nationwide street protests against the reforms and in September embarked on a two-day warning strike. Authorities promised to respond. Last Friday, the National Industrial Court of Nigeria ordered the workers' unions to not go on another strike. Eze Onyekbere is the executive director of a pro-union NGO, the Center for Social Justice. The regime came on board and removed the LCD and uh, created the Naira, which I need to speak out here, the minimum wage is like every less than $30. And things the government was supposed to be to reduce the hardship of the land, which they didn't do. So for people like me, this strike, it's all that deal. On Monday, the presidency criticized the strike, calling it unwarranted, and said authorities have launched a probe into the attack of the union leader. Onyekbere says the government must not make empty promises or there will be consequences. We are going to degenerate it, but we are any refraff simply because it's in power. We'll simply be beating up anybody. That's that day. The day the Nigeria depends to that level of workers don't speak out or workers don't show their strength, then Nigeria is going to the blocks. The unions say authorities must prosecute those who beat Ajero, offer an apology, and take steps to improve the welfare of workers and citizens. Without those measures, they say the strike will continue. Tim Ballot counting is underway in Liberia after yesterday's runoff election between President George Weir and former Vice President Joseph Baakai in what was expected to be a closely fought vote. Turnout appeared lighter than during the first round of voting, which had a turnout of 79% of around 2.4 million registered voters. 
Reporter Denise Nimson in Monrovia spoke to me earlier today about where things stand. Scouting is on the way in um, the 15 counties of Liberia as of the election that was held on yesterday across Monrovia. So the counting process is on the way currently. Um, Liberians are waiting for the National Elections Commission to start pronouncing preliminary results as it relates to their votes that were cast on yesterday. And uh, Denise, you told me yesterday that turnout appeared lighter in Monrovia, the capital, compared with the first round of voting. The turnout was low, yes, like I said, and it's not only in Monrovia, but across the country, it was noticed that observed that the turnout has been low during the um, the voting process because most of the people in the election, it was the general election. So you realize that now that you have the the runoff election that is just a presidential runoff election without members of the legislature being part of it, that also could contribute um, so the low turnout, another factor could be that Liberians um, are a bit tired, perhaps, of the process. So they decide to, to sit back and just watch the process. So Hundreds of former rebels and government troops in South Sudanese unified forces were deployed at a long overdue ceremony on Wednesday, marking progress for the country's lumbering peace process. The world's new West nation has struggled to find its footing since gaining independence from Sudan in 2011, battling violence, endemic poverty, and natural disasters. The unification of forces royal to President Salva Kiir and his rival, Vice President Riek Machal, was a key condition of the 2018 peace deal that ended a five-year conflict in which nearly 400,000 people died. Tens of thousands of former fighters were integrated into the country's army in August last year, but none have been deployed until now with the delays fueling frustration in the international community. The 1st Battalion, comprising nearly 1,000 soldiers, will be deployed to Malakai in northern Upper Nile State, which has received a huge number of South Sudanese refugees freeing the conflict in neighboring Sudan. At the ceremony on the outskirts of the capital, Juba, Santino Wall, the country's chief of defense forces, urged the battalion to remain united, saying, be a soldier and don't get involved in politics. The unity government led by Kiel and Machal has largely failed to meet their provisions of the peace agreement, including drafting a constitution and electoral legislation ahead of polls now set for next year. Kiel has vowed to hold the country's first ever presidential ballot by December 2024, but UN envoy Nicholas Hanson warned in August that the authorities needed to create a conducive environment to ensure, to ensure peaceful, inclusive, and credible elections. One of the poorest countries on the planet, despite large oil reserves, South Sudan has spent almost half of its life as a nation at war and continues to be rolled by outbreaks of politically motivated ethnic violence.